Big welcome to our Wednesday live class at 12 o'clock. Remember to join us every Wednesday. So big welcome to everybody that's joining us and obviously we would love to know who you are and where you're watching in from. So please comment below. The other thing we would love you to do is share, okay? So if you could share this video, maybe if you're a member of a gardening club or a flower club or even on your own Facebook page or your own business page, we would really appreciate it. So we're always being requested to do a foam free arrangement and obviously with peonies being in season at the moment I thought this was going to be an ideal time to do something foam free. So first of all you need to get yourself some chicken wire and you'll buy that in your local building providers, your farm, local farm co-op or probably your garden centre. And then depending on the size of the container, you'll need to cut yourself a square piece. Obviously it depends on the shape of the container, what shape you're going to cut. And then it's just a matter of molding it, okay, into the shape, you know what I mean, that the top of your container is. So the one that I have today, that's the top of the container. And what I've kind of made is nearly like a ball shape. You see that kind of like wedges down into it. So you can see how I've started it off and then kind of bringing it around again. Now I've done a couple of these foam free arrangements using chicken wire. I'm not sure if you've watched my previous tutorials. So if you haven't, because it depends on the shape I'm making and depends on the style I'm gonna, you know, I'm designing that day, I do the chicken wire slightly different. So I probably would recommend that you search us up on YouTube because I upload them all to YouTube when I'm finished. So if you search us on YouTube, uh, Case Flower School, uh, follow us and obviously subscribe to our YouTube channel, do you know the way? Well then you will be able to watch all the past videos that I did. So you can see there, right? So in other tutorials, I didn't have the chicken wire overlapping underneath, but for this particular design, I do need the chicken wire to overlap underneath. And the reason is I'm gonna show you, and um, I want to do this kind of more like a horizontal kind of display. And when you're doing it horizontal, when you're sticking your foliage in from one side, okay, it must kind of go into the stem of the chicken wire or the grid of the chicken wire on the opposite side. So that's why you need the chicken wire underneath. Where other displays, I just have the chicken wire on top. I don't have it overlapping underneath and that's how I get it to hold, you see out to the side. And obviously the water fills up inside the container. So obviously your stems are going to be in water. So hopefully that makes sense. But obviously if anybody has any questions there, post all your questions in the comments. And um, if I don't get to answer you now, I will respond back to everybody this evening. So again, for anybody that's joining us, big welcome. My name is Jeanette from Case Flower School. Uh, today we're doing a foam free arrangement using chicken wire. And I've already got our chicken wire inserted into the container. You can always watch this on the replay later on. So the next thing then is get some water. Some of my stems went down into it here. And we're going to fill the container up with water because as I said like any of the shallow stems at the top and especially with the design that I'm doing today being kind of more horizontal you need to make sure there's quite a lot of water in the container. Now that can be a disadvantage when you go to transport it or even move the arrangement around because there is a good chance you know what I mean the flowers the water is going to spill out of it. Now your option is empty the water out and refill it back when you get on site, okay? The idea of doing it foam free is that it's more sustainable and it's great for the environment. And the chicken wire can be used again. So when you go to buy chicken wire, you can buy it with a plastic coating on it. It's a little bit easier on the hands, you know that way? But just kind of keep in mind, it's probably not as environmentally friendly, do you know the way, if you buy the chicken wire with the plastic coating on it. So what I'm going to do is um, the front will be facing you but so, and the back is facing me. It's going to be a front facing arrangement. So I'm going to add some of the foliage like I was demonstrating in one side of the chicken wire and you can't obviously see it. I can't hold this up now or the water will spill all over the place but it's going into the opposite cage, you know what I mean, over the opposite side, okay, for support. And I'm going to do a couple of these kind of going across, right? And I'm kind of looking for a little bit of a bend or a curve, you know, that way on our chick, on our, uh, I'm going to say our chicken wire, on our bottle brush, okay, to kind of get like a flowing design. And at the moment, even where it may not kind of be balancing up even, you know, that way we'll work on that. And obviously I'll turn around and I'll look at it from the other side later on. So again, I'm just stepping up slightly and I'm going into the grids, you know what I mean, that I showed you that I had down there a little bit lower. And here's a nice one with a bit of a curve on it. So again, just stepping up. 
in the grid and going into the opposite grid over the opposite side. Now there is plastic versions of the chicken wire out there. They're not called chicken wire by the way. They would be called kind of more the guppy. And anybody that's done bridal with me on module three, we use the guppy here at the school. It's a container that's it's actually brought in from Canada. So one of our past students actually has the agency, I suppose you'd call it, for selling guppies and um, man's flowers. I'm not sure what part of the country she's in. And uh, Fiona McGurk is her name. If she's watching, she might put up her links there. Or if anybody knows her links there, they might just feel free to add them and then people can contact her and they can buy them. So with the guppy, like you could, it's a plastic version of it, but it's sustainable plastic that's used and also it can be reused quite a lot. Now, for the moment, I'll turn that around and I'll have a look from your side because yours is going to be the front. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few short pieces of green and I'm going right down through the grid. Okay, so through our chicken wire, but also through where the stems kind of crisscrossed, okay? And some of these smaller ones, they kind of like face out to the front. I will need to turn that around and look at it from the other side now in a second. But again, I just want you to kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of placing them down and maybe a nod bit, just a little bit longer to just kind of like trail down over the edge of the container. Now you can, you can do this two-sided if you want to, but this sort of shape is very much on trend at the moment. And again, a lot of people have been contacting us and saying, do you know any chance of doing that style? Now I'm gonna just turn it around that I'm looking at the front. Not bad for doing the arrangement backwards. Okay, and now I'm just going to add an extra little bit of filling in here and there, just kind of finishing up and creating the shape that I want. And I will fill in the back of the arrangement. So you're now basically looking at the back, right? And I will fill in the back later on with um, just again, some little short bits kind of like hiding that part of the container. Just want to add a few more kind of like long trails into it, just kind of over this way. I think it'll just kind of like look nice. And you can mix the foliage, but when you're starting, it's probably a good idea to keep to the one type of foliage. But like trails of ivy would be beautiful kind of going through this display. Or again, I think some like asparagus fern or anybody um, in a flower shop like Ruskas would be perfect as well for adding into this display. Eucalyptus would be brilliant. We're kind of restricted at the moment foliage wise where the Irish growers are not really cutting up a lot of their foliage at the moment because it's the growing season and obviously they have a lot of the new growth on the foliage and they don't want to be cutting away all their trees that they'll have nothing left over. So happy enough, still a bit of the chicken wire showing, but as I said, I have to get the flowers in, so I don't want to overdo it for the moment. So I have a couple of uh, long stems of a stilby here. So I'm gonna use the stilby coming out to the outside. So kind of like a similar system, like the lower uh, cage, you know that way, and then kind of like catching it either in between the, um, the stems of the foliage that's already in there, or even in among the chicken wire, you know, the grids that's on the opposite side. I am going to turn it around to me, I just kind of feel it'll be easier if I'm actually looking at what I'm doing. And I will turn it back and forward to you as I go along. So again, I'm kind of following that kind of like horizontal shape kind of coming out to the side. And if you don't have the um, chicken wire kind of molded underneath, you know what I mean, like I showed you at the beginning, you won't be able to get that effect, okay? And if you've watched previous tutorials, I've done them slightly different, I have, because it obviously depends on what design I want to kind of like create that particular way. So I'm gonna bring a few little short ones kind of out to the front, kind of trailing over the edge, and a few short ones cut here. Now with a steel bit, a lot of people kind of find it dries out pretty fast, and yet it does dry out pretty fast. But we have our online tutorial that you can download for free, by the way. And it gives you all the latest top tips for, you know, keeping your flowers fresh, treatment and conditioning, you know what I mean? And what you can do to a still be to stop that happening. So how you can download it, because it is an online program, but there is over 60 um, different tutorials, over 60 different varieties of fresh flowers and foliage. So you can watch them and you can um, see all the latest tips and tricks for treating and conditioning them. Now again, I'm just turning this back around to me. And um, you can get a copy or you can sign up to that program just by writing in the comments underneath there, 
um, any chance of a free link. So if you write that underneath, any chance of a free link, we'll get one of them free links and we'll get you signed up. And again, you will have that. You'll have access to it for six months and it'll cost you absolutely nothing. So again, I've just added in a little bit of the Stilby kind of going in and out through there. Just want to straighten that one up a little bit just by bringing it into another hole. And the next thing I'm going to work on next is adding in some of the peonies. So in the center, I'm going to keep like some of my larger headed peonies, okay? So I have some here that are nicely blown and I'm going to keep them kind of quite low down. And I have the stems short, okay, that they'll actually tip the water, but yet they don't actually have to go down to the grid of foliage kind of in underneath. So again, I'm just adding a couple of kind of like bigger heads towards the center. And the normal rule with flower arranging is larger flowers to the center and smaller flowers towards the outside. So that's just kind of giving you a focal area, you know, that way in the center. And you could use two hydrangeas there in the center and that would be absolutely beautiful as well. And then kind of coming a little bit, not right out to the edge, but kind of at the halfway mark there, we're going to bring a little peony kind of like in among the um the still be there and again we'll bring another little pe peony out to the opposite side again in among the peony i don't want to bring it right out to the edges not for the moment anyway the next thing i have is a couple of the veronica and the veronica is great again for giving you points so i'm going to bring some of this veronica towards the outside give us them nice points but obviously some of it is going to come up through the display as well so put some of it a little bit shorter and bring it up through our display Sorry, Jeanette, one yeah. of the questions that's here is, do you prefer working in foam or chicken wire? Foam. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a bit old school. Um, we would do a lot of, say, like events. So means like for preparation, I'm able to have them all greened up way in advance and then put the flowers in kind of like nearer the time and then on site add in a few extra flowers. It's a lot more difficult to transport a foam free arrangement. So a lot of people who do foam free arrangements are probably not doing it on a, a big commercial scale, as in they wouldn't be in a flower shop. So, I'm not saying they wouldn't be, but the majority of them wouldn't because it just doesn't work. Like you think like for Mother's Day or Valentine's Day, peak seasons, it's not going to work. And some of the funeral tributes, uh, again, I'm not saying you can't make them sustainable, but a lot of the designs, when people are looking for mams and dads and trucks and cars and bikes and ice cream vans and you name it, like done in flowers, it doesn't work out quite as easy, do you know that way, when you're doing them foam free, where like when you go to the suppliers, they have all the, the foam containers, you know the way, the foam shapes, and it's so easy to get the shape that you're actually looking for. But again, it is personal choice and it's really, it's individual and it's up to whatever you kind of feel yourself. Yeah, um, somebody else is just asking, when is our next module up on the website for it to book? So for our next module one, and um, I think it's starting in about three or four weeks time. So the best thing to do is go to the calendar. In other words, I'm not sure the exact date, right? So go to our website, flowerschoolireland.com, scroll down to the calendar and you'll get all the, the future dates coming up. Now, normally um, we recommend start with module one first, okay? So for any of our beginners, you know the way we recommend start with module one and then you can work your way to module two, module three, module four. Like we get a lot of students asking us, can they skip a module? Like that would be like learning how to swim and saying to the swimming instructor, ah, can I jump in the deep end first? You know the way? No. You start at the shallow end, you have your armbands on and you learn how to kick your legs at the bar. And eventually we'll bring you to the middle part of the pool and eventually we'll throw you in the deep end of the swimming pool with no armbands and you kick your legs all on your own. Do you know the way? And we do exactly the same thing with the flowers you training here at the school. When people come and they decide to skip a module, they end up then kind of like losing out because they're saying, well, what about the whole service? Should we cover that module one? What about writing up recipes? Oh, back on module one. What about your business plan? Mm, on module two. What about knowing how many materials or what material I need to buy for my own business? Module four. What about our pricing formulas? What about our overheads? Module four and module one. So can you see the way, if you were actually to go to the website, and check up the syllabus, you know that way, for each of the programs, you will see exactly what we cover, you know that way, on each of the programs. So you can see now where, I just kind of want to lose that kind of regular shape, so just by kind of bringing them two up a little bit higher. Next what I want to do is add in a little bit of the Achillea in and out through it. And again, it's just giving us all dimensions and different shaped flowers where we have the roundiness of our protea. We have the pointiness. Oh, 
peony, sorry. <laughs> the pointiness of our, that's the second time I've done that, the, of the Veronica, and then the flatness of the Achillea. And when you're doing flower arrangements, it's really important to have lots of different shapes and textures, you know the way, because again, it just makes it that little bit more interesting. Um, sorry, just Jeanette, there's another question here. She lives in the UK and she wants to know um, how easy is it that she saw on the website that we give them a discount and she buys her own flowers. How easy is it for them to get their flowers? No problem at all. So everybody will have one-to-one -one access to a tutor, okay? You, it's not a WhatsApp group. It'll be one-to-one -one WhatsApp with a tutor. And again, they will be able to help you and advise you. You're a supplier close to you. They'll give you a list of the flowers. And again, if you need any help, we normally buy in all the flowers direct from Holland for all our students for, for all of the modules. So again, we can get you set up an account with Holland and you can buy your flowers in personally yourself. We used to be able to do it directly for the English students, but since Brexit, with customs and VAT rates and the whole lot, it's not possible for us to do that anymore. So unfortunately, we have to like get you to do it yourself. But listen, like if you listen to any of the testimonials from students who have attended the courses from New Zealand, America, Australia, Canada, you name it, you know that way, and all of them students all source their own materials and their own flowers. Actually, the kit, we post the kit out to you, so that's not a problem. So it's never been a hassle, you know, that way. And I know one girl was kind of struggling with it before, and what I did was literally, I was on my laptop, she was on her laptop, and step by step, we went through the order. I just want to get a little bit of September flower now, just to add a little bit of softness to this display. So maybe, Deirdre, you might just get me another stem of it there when you get a second. So. I've actually broke that one when I grabbed it. Oh no, I didn't break it. It's actually, it's, it's the stem is bad. So this is the September flare or the Aster, okay? And again, it's a great flare to kind of give you a nice softness to your displays. And again, if you're looking for something, as I do call, wild and wonderful. So again, I'm just kind of cleaning down our foliage. I'm going to leave this one kind of pretty long. Come in there at the side of the chicken wire again and down into the cage. And just make sure that it's down in the water, which it is. And again, we're going to get another stem and I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to cut a couple of these little small ones off. Won't waste them. I'll use them kind of like individually and um, through the center of the arrangement. So again, just cut a little bit of length off this one. And again, we're going to bring this out to the edge. Now you don't have to use exactly the same material that I'm using, but if anybody is watching there and you kind of have a suggestion of, well, could I substitute and could I use such a thing? Just place it in the comments. If Deirdre doesn't get to you, as I said, I will go through all the comments this evening and I'll respond to everybody individual. Now, see lots of you there are putting up that you want the link. And again, we will, we'll come back to everybody there with a, how to sign up and you can download the course for free and you have access to it for six months and it cost you absolutely nothing. After six months, we will be charging for that particular course, by the way. So you might as well take advantage at the moment and get it for free when you're able to get it for free. And uh, Luciana is saying, she says she absolutely loves it. Mm. She was always told that it must be two and a half times the height of the arrangement. Um, how I went two and a half times the width this time, <laughs> more than two and a half. How do you know what's right? It's all to do with visual balance, proportions, you know that way, and balance with your container. So yeah, I went quite wide, I've kind of, you know, kept it kind of quite low, do you know what I mean? But this shape is very much on trend at the moment. And you'll also find what's on trend at the moment is um, breaking all the rules that's out there. So instead of keeping all your flares even and formal, like let's go kind of more wild and wonderful. Now that could all change in a couple of months time, do you know the way? Or maybe next year you come back and things are completely different. That's the thing about the flowers trade. I often wonder what Einstein, floristry Einstein out there decided what all these rules are going to be. And then, um, like the rules are good. Obviously with the students, we cover all the rules of flare arranging and the principles, etc. But sometimes like your eye can tell you whether something is right or wrong. So like depend on your own kind of instinct. And if you think it looks good, go for it. And if you don't think it looks good, change it and see how it goes. Again, just turning that around, just to kind of like let you see it the little bits of September flare kind of dancing through it. Now what I want to do then is finish in the back of the arrangement. So again, you could use short stems of flowers so that maybe you cut up short. Like if this was on a receptionist's desk, 
remember that's the only person that's seen the back of the arrangement but even if it's in a church in other words sometimes you might maybe put that on an altar or a side altar and maybe the videographer or the photographer takes a photograph of the bride and groom over there but he's getting the back of your arrangement in it so keep that in mind you know that way always fill in the mechanics or cover in or hide the mechanics in the back of your arrangement so we often call it to the students, we just say the L one in the other bed, you know, that way. So it's kind of finish it off again. If anybody has any, because that was a very good question. If anybody else has any questions, put them in the comments and I'll definitely respond back to you. I'll turn it around now and I'll show you what the back looks like. Because our L one in the other bed will be absolutely delighted that that's what she has to look at. So hopefully you enjoyed that phone free class. I've tried to make it as simple as possible and something that maybe you could cover at home. If anybody does copy or make something similar, I'd love to see it posted over in, over in the Flurry Fun Group. Somebody might post a link there for me for the Flurry Fun Group. And this is a, a free group that anybody can join. You don't have to be professional. You don't have to be commercial. You just have to be somebody who just loves flowers. There's no critique. There's no feedback. There's no rudeness, there's no arguments. It's just way. supportive. It's a yeah. support kind of fun group, you know that way. And it's just, if you make something out of your own garden, feel free to post it. And the thing is, everybody will admire it. So the best of luck, everybody. Join us back next Wednesday for our free Wednesday class. Don't forget, if you're looking for the free link, post that you're looking for the link in the comments and I'll respond back to you later on. Thanks a million for joining and see you all next week. Bye-bye.